Okay, my last video of the day. You can tell my hair is done, <laughs> but we're gonna talk about that too. Um, well, not my hair, but we're gonna talk about today um, where does real beauty come from? Because, <laughs> and the reason I'm talking about that, it's not like it's that important. Um, because today, so much emphasis is placed on beauty and beauty products and beautiful clothes and beautiful people wearing beautiful clothes. And, oh, and, I, and I think it could actually be stressful, you know? I mean, I'm not stressful. I used to be. Um, I don't know if it was with me more about trying to be beautiful it was more of trying to be popular and but I guess a lot of people think I guess if you're beautiful and you have a lot of fancy clothes and um, that you'll be popular or I don't know have a lot of money I used to think that um, but I've learned you know over time you know what real beauty is and plus what the Word of God says that's what I'm gonna tell you so people don't um, um, feel bad because you know not everybody looks the same or if you're um, not asked to be on the cover of something doesn't mean that you're not beautiful because I have to tell you this um, about what the Bible says about beauty and I have to tell you a story now of course besides my own mother and my daughters and now my uh, daughter-in-laws um, there was this woman that I met and I kid you not an older woman and I'm old <laughs> okay but she's even older um, and I would probably say a lot and I'm telling you what, this woman, oh my gosh, I, she was so beautiful. I, um, I cannot forget her face. And uh, obviously she was, you know, born again Christian, loved the Lord with all her heart. And, and I'm not saying this, this is not a critical thing, but her wrinkles were so deep, her whole entire face. Um, depending on where you live and you know how much time you spend out in the sun stuff like that um, but anyway I'm just trying to give you an example everywhere her whole face the wrinkles were so deep you you may not I don't know if you've ever seen anybody like that but it, they're like very very deep and so there was lots and lots of wrinkles um, but this woman was so beautiful. You could look in her eyes. And I mean, you could, it was just like, the depth of beauty was no face cream, no plastic surgery, um, no, uh, you know, facelift or new teeth or uh, anything nose job or anything that people do could compare to this beauty and it was like the first time I've ever seen that um, except for obviously the natural beauty of your your loved ones but and my loved ones but and 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 they have beautiful hearts as well if I may say <laughs> But um, I'm just trying to talk about the beauty that comes from within. It was I'd never seen it in the, like this as far as somebody being that um, a, a Christian like that. But it makes sense. Uh, let me read this to you, what the Bible says. Because you, when you get older, that's what I'm counting on. <laughs> that beauty from inside. That's why I'm trying to work on that getting better because this out here goes for all of us it goes <laughs> don't we all know right <laughs> you know and it doesn't matter what you wear how much makeup you put on it's that is gonna go all right even you know people start doing all this kind of extra work and stuff and then you look fake 
You do. People know when you have something that's fake. They know it. You might not think they do, but they do. It's better just to be yourself and, and to be like this woman or man, you know, that is, oh, and even men can be the way. I've seen men with their eyes sparkle. They sparkle. Have you ever seen that? I'm telling you, that's that. the Bible says the eyes are the windows to the soul. So you can look in somebody's eyes and yeah, you can see, you can see, I can, I mean, I'm, maybe some other people can too, I'm sure they can, but you can see darkness when it's dark in somebody's soul, I guess if you want to say it like that sounds creepy but you can you can see that maybe not all the time I'm not saying I see it all the time but I have and I've seen people's eyes sparkle and hers sparkled um, it was that oh let me read this here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 and God said behold oh wrong one <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> oh goodness I guess I should Pay attention, right? Okay. Um, you should close yourself instead. Remember what we were just talking about? You know, everybody, and I'll be honest with you, people spend tons and tons and tons of money on clothes. Nothing wrong with that. But they spend a lot of money on clothes or shoes or uh, jewelry, you know, to try to make the outside look good. And I'm telling you how you can look good. You know, it wasn't, I didn't notice her clothes, didn't notice her jewelry, nothing. Yeah, I mean, you know, her hair was probably cute, I'm sure, but it was her eyes. Her eyes were so beautiful and it wasn't just because of the color or anything. They, she was beautiful and you could tell it was beauty that came from the inside. And how do you get beautiful on the inside? Spending time with the Lord, yeah. Listen to this. Um, first, uh, this is First Peter, chapter three, verse four. Okay. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Let me read some more. Same, same scripture, just more translations. I love that Bible hub. <laughs> Um, you should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. And it says here, And let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth before God so I know when you're young and you're beautiful and clean your clothes everything looks nice on you doesn't matter and you know you just but I'm telling you we're all getting older and you want to work on that beauty because you know, the money that people spend on cosmetics and face creams and surgeries and um, just, and we'll even talk a little bit about that too. I definitely think the number one way to be beautiful is the Lord um, smiling. Oh my gosh, you have to hear this. Okay. Okay. So I looked at some of my pictures. All right. And Oh my gosh, they were they were not so good. You know, your neck and, and it was just like hanging and stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know, we may not like it, you know. And I, you can try to improve it, you know. Uh, but nothing wrong with that. I don't truthfully believe in doing artificial things because I think sometimes you're gonna you could do more damage than good and then you don't even look like yourself and like I said everybody knows when something's fake I don't care what it is people know it's better just to you know accept it be a happy person because here's the deal with that I noticed and I noticed in some other pictures I'm like 
How come my neck isn't sagging in them pictures? You know what it was? Guess what, girls? You want an instant facelift? <laughs> I guess I'm obviously talking to an older crowd. Smile! Look what happens. Okay, I'm just sitting here. You see this? Look. Look at my face. It's like, everything's like down. Right? Can you see? Okay, smile. It's like everything goes up. I'm like, awesome! Now I just have to keep a permanent smile on my face. But I'm not kidding. It, it really did it. I thought, there's, there you go. You know? <laughs> I know, that's funny, huh? Um, but really, the number one thing is the hidden man of the heart. You know? Um, people sometimes will say things to me, and I'm thinking, I have, like, no makeup on. I, I'm, I always wear the same exact thing. My work clothes, hair back in a ponytail, no makeup, no nothing. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> and the, the, the comments I get is, I'm like, huh? And then I'm, I know. And, and they'll, they'll say, they may say something. They'll say, it, it's Jesus. Um, cause obviously they're seeing something I don't see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I really believe that it is the Lord shining through. I really do believe and then obviously when you're happy and you're smiling and because a lot of people are, are kind of sad and downtrodden these days so but it definitely um, is from the inside you know I don't care if you're young you know start filling yourself up with God now you know because I'm telling you you get more beautiful the more of God you put in you the more beautiful you become because God is beautiful you know, all of his, everything about him. And I don't mean physically, because I don't know what he looks like, but um, just beauty is, is not just outside. Listen to this scripture. I wrote this down um, in uh, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 22 through 24. It says, kindness makes a man attractive. I imagine, you know, obviously a woman too. Kindness, being kind, just being kind. And, and, and if you're struggling with being kind, put more of God in you. And obviously with the word, you know, spend time with God's presence, get in that secret place alone with God. You become more like him and he is beautiful. And it's not just physically, it's, it's kindness. You're gentle, you know, you're um, not an angry person, you're forgiving, you're like the fruits of the Spirit. There's the fruits of the Spirit, which are love. You love more, you love better, joy, you have more joy, peace, you're peaceful. People can tell when you're peaceful, especially when you're peaceful in a, in a, a difficult situation. Um, kindness, goodness, gent people know when you have a good heart, gentleness, you're faithful, patient, you're patient, you're patient, and self-control. You can control yourself, you know? Some people don't have any control in their life, um, in, in a lot of different areas. You know, those are fruits of the Spirit. And that's, those fruits of the Spirit are going to show up as you spend time with God. That fruit. You know, the Bible says um, you will know them by their fruit. You'll know Christians by their fruit. Do they have those attributes which are like Jesus? You will know them. You know, look at somebody's life. You'll know them. And again, nobody's perfect all the time. But I'm, I'm saying for the most part. You know, sometimes people have bad days or bad weeks or bad months. <laughs> I mean, I know I have, but um, you, you don't want to judge somebody for an isolated incident or an isolated, you know, amount of time going through something maybe. But, um, you know, what are people like most of the time? Let's just say most of the time, because I'm sure you had your bad days too, you know. So, but anyway, 
So the kindness, kindness, you know, the fruits of the spirit, that's going to be evident if you spend time with the Lord. But I love this kindness makes a man attractive. You could be the most beautiful woman or handsome man. But if you're, if you're kind of all into yourself and you're impatient with people and actually mean sometime, you could be the most beautiful person in the world, man or woman. Okay, have the finest of all the finest clothes, but you're not really beautiful. Not if it's not in here. You know, it's the hidden man of the heart, what the Bible says. And it says it's better. Listen to that. Wait till you hear the end of this scripture. This is really good. I didn't even, as I was writing it down, I was just looking for the kindness part. But listen to this. It goes on. Because this is uh, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 22 through 24. It says, and it is better to be poor than dishonest. Here we go. You know, you have very wealthy people and they're not honest. Yeah, and, and that's not good. You know? And it says, listen to this. I'm going to keep going. The same, you know. Reverence for God. Listen to this. This is so good. Reverence for God gives life, happiness, and protection from harm. Wow. There's a lot in that sentence. Literally, listen to this. Reverence for God. You know, how do you reverence God? You, you honor him. You obey him. You, you do your very best to live for him. Again, you know, nobody's perfect. But if you do something wrong, repent. And try to be better. Ask God for help. He'll help you. But reverence. You reverence him. It's like when you say, you know, have the fear of the Lord. Now, that's not, I'm afraid of him, you know. It's, oh, God. I, it's like a, a fear. It's like a reverence. Like, oh, I would never want to dishonor you. I would never want to disobey you. Oh, God. And if you do, you're like, you're so, so, so sorry. Uh, you know, and you repent, and you repent, and you repent. You don't have to more than once, you know, but we do, you know, because you're just, oh, you're so broken because you, you just honor him. You reverence him, you know. Wow. You respect. I call it respect. You respect him, that fear of the Lord, that respect of him. He's God. But listen, I love this. Reverence for God gives life. All kinds of life. Hey, even life to all this. Life to your body. You know, could we use some more life here? Maybe I, I feel like I'm not so lively. You need some more life. You know, everybody's caught up with health and, and, and me too. But, you know, you could be doing uh, all, all the natural things. And I, I'm nothing against exercise, nothing against eating right. I am all for that. I am. I think those things are all good, you know, but, you know, do not forget the reverence for God. He's going to give you life, which means to me, life is the opposite of death, feeling run down and, and depressed. And I don't have no strength. I don't have no energy. I don't have no get up and go. Somebody said to me yesterday, they said, you know, they wanted me to carry something for them. It was heavy and, and, uh. I said, oh, it's not so so heavy or something like that. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, it, it is. She says, "My, I usually have get up and go, but my get up and go got up and went or something like that. She's like, no, there's no way I can carry that. But I, you know, God gives us a life in our physical body, in our mind. You got a clear mind. You got clarity, you know. Um that is so good. Life, life. He gives us life in our um, businesses, in our families, in our um, relation, relationships, whatever. Life is life. Anything in your life that seems dead, he'll give life to it. It doesn't matter what it is. 
reverence him and watch things that seem dead come back to life. That's what we're going to pray for. Yeah. Give life, Lord. There's another scripture that reminds me of quicken our mortal bodies, but quicken everything, you know? Um, yeah. Give life. Life is always, anytime you hear the word life, life, that's good, you know? And, uh, you know, that's why, here's another thing. One of these times I'm going to do a teaching on, uh, this is another whole teaching on um, idols. That's what I was going to do. I'll do that next time. Idols and cursed objects and, you know, um, let's just say things that don't represent life, they represent death. And they're wearing skulls and all this, you know, there's, there's witchcraft. I mean, we're going to get into it, you know things that open up doors to the enemy that we do or we even have in our home, you know? Please, I'm gonna put that in the comment thing if you ever want to in the description. If you wanna ask me questions or, or put any uh, comments down there, um, I love Q and A's, but I also uh, will take prayer requests. Of course, I will pray for you. Um, I'm gonna to pray today, obviously. I love to do that. Um, as well, but we're going to talk about, you know, house cleaning, getting stuff out of your house, getting stuff out of your life, you know, things that don't give life. They actually do the opposite, you know. Yeah. We can open up doors in our life that are not good, but we can also close them, you know, and uh, that's what I'm going to help you do. <laughs> help you recognize them. I've been studying for a long time this stuff. So, um, and I'm going to let you know about them. You know, one time I went to pray over something and I thought, oh, this is, this is not good. <laughs> yeah, this is not good. And I went to pray over this stuff. And you know what the Lord said to me? It's kind of stopped me right in my tracks. And he said, you cannot bless what I have cursed. Whoa. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, and we'll talk about that. That's going to be one whole, um, that's going to be a video all by itself. So, but right now we're talking about beauty and how to be beautiful. And you know, we're talking about putting that beauty on the inside, but what you put on the inside affects the outside, right? You keep putting God on the inside. I'm telling you what, you're going to look happier. You're going to, remember what I said about the facelift thing? Yeah, <laughs> that too. But but you will. It'll affect, um, God is going to affect your life in many ways. Okay? Now, there's also something else I wanted to talk about. And this is about food. We're talking about being beautiful. And, and I heard this a long time ago, but I didn't do it. I never really did it. No, because I used to be a junk food junkie. But I, I really believe that the things we put in our body um, affect how we look on the outside as well. For instance, um, like if you're eating good food and good drinks, your, your skin is going to look better. I believe it's going to help you to look younger. Your hair will be uh, softer. Your um, nails, just everything, it's going to affect the outside. I never really took that very seriously or I thought, oh my gosh, how much do you have to eat or drink to affect your outside? But it really is true. Um, I believe it is. You know, just how like when you exercise physically, you not only feel better, um, it's good for all your organs and, and things like that, but it actually makes you look better too, you know, better circulation and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and like, again, don't do anything in excess because, you know, you could get out of balance even in good areas. It's definitely, I'm a big, you know, fan of definitely exercising, but don't do anything overboard. That's how I feel, you know, unless you're reading your Bible <laughs> that you could do or loving other people or helping other people, stuff like that. There are areas you can, you know, but when we're focused on ourself and I got to look good and I got to this and I got to that. Now, I will say this, and I've said this before, extreme situations require extreme measures. If somebody is really sick and they've got to get better real fast or something like that, then, yeah, you got to hit things hard. 
you know, you've got to overflow your body with a lot of really good things to detox your body, build up your immune system. You have to. Um, it's better if you just do it every day, a little bit every day, you know, just to maintain or prevent things from happening. But if you have a crisis, then yeah, you have to, you want to nip that thing and hit it hard. And, you know, maybe we'll do, um, I'll do a video on health. I love health and things that you can actually eat and drink that are really good for you that people may not know about. I can't really tell you what to do. Um, I could just tell you what I do. You know, everybody has to do what they feel is right for themselves. But I, I know that I used to glean off of people. I would be like, well, this is all new to me and I'm overwhelmed and it's too much and I'm not used to this and, you know, it just seems too much and I can't do it, it's too much, you know? But if you start out slow, a little bit, just listen. Start listening and learning. Today is, is a good day to start. You take in a little bit every day and learn a little bit every day before you know it. You know, you become an expert over your own health. You can, and then the thing is, knowledge to me I don't know if this is a good thing to say knowledge is power I feel like when you're knowledgeable about something you're a lot less fearful because you're like oh, I know about that that's not so bad or oh, I know to do it for that I don't you know I have to go all out or I know what to do if you if you become knowledgeable then you won't usually make decisions out of fear or necessarily always listen to someone else you know you've got to know your stuff people you know because you don't know if what they're telling you always is the truth I don't care who it is you know um, educate yourself find out for yourself always check up on things um, for yourself so anyway but um, so we talked about that and I had some scriptures here about the things we put in our body because you, you want to look younger, well, start taking care of yourself and you wouldn't have to, you know, um, buy so many maybe creams and lotions and, and then eventually people will even go so far and have surgeries and stuff. You can go ahead and start working on yourself right now. You know what I mean? At any age. Every little bit helps, and it's more for health. This is not about weight and that you have to be this beauty queen or king and try to impress everybody and take selfies and and do stuff like that. <laughs> no, because <laughs> it almost looks like you're vain. Like, I want to take pictures of myself and post them. <laughs> Basically, what you're saying is, look at me. I look beautiful. What do you think, you know? You don't need to do that. I tell you what, I have, there's another woman too. It reminds me of this woman. Oh my gosh. You talk about kindness. I mean, never wore things to impress anybody. Never. I mean, you would have thought, you know, to, I mean, how many girls want to show off their bodies and guys too now, you know, but it's like, why are we doing that? why are we and I didn't trust me you wouldn't believe the things I used to wear to church oh my gosh especially when I was first saved oh my god I'm surprised I didn't get kicked out but hopefully over time you grow and you learn and um but it's like why do we want someone to look at our body well I wonder why I saw this commercial um, on YouTube, but it's, it's actually commercial. You know, you're watching your videos and a commercial comes up and it was about hair and it was an older woman and it said, show your age. She was an older woman. They were showing her hair and then it said, show your body. And then I can't remember what the last thing was, but I was like, what does your body have to do with your hair or your age or shampoo but I'm but then I thought about it and I thought oh maybe they're talking about the body in your hair I guess I think they're putting them together but do you see what's coming through the the um, the show your body even if it did mean shampoo just those things being said show your body you know what I mean? It's it's like we 
want people to look at us and 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 look at us and we want to show off our body different parts of our bodies and things and and I wonder about that um, if you wonder why I don't know <laughs> I don't know I mean I guess I do you want to be attractive but you know what if you're like married or what if you're like a Christian and I don't know yeah, we have to, I guess we got to make sure we got the right heart and all that. You know what I'm saying? Because I've made mistakes in that area too. And and now I, I get convicted, you know, about stuff like that. And I, I think the closer and more mature you are in the Lord, you you get better at that. And I'm not even perfect in it as either. I'm trying, but yeah, yeah, we want to, uh, you want to attract the right kind of people. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want people to fall by looking at you. And that's another thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, because men can lust after women. And you know, the Bible says if you do that, you've already committed adultery. So we want to make sure that we don't um, dress in a way that would cause them to do that. You know, we want to we want to protect them. Not somebody's son or somebody's father or husband or something so we want to we want to be modest yeah there's even a scripture in the bible about you know having modest apparel and yeah so and again that goes for men as well you know it, it's easy to show your body off it is it's hard to cover it up because i don't know why we was want to show it off you know and i yeah, I think that is, you know, probably just immaturity and we don't want to be used to the enemy to cause someone to stumble or fall, you know, by looking at, at us in the wrong way. You know, we wouldn't want to do that. You wouldn't want somebody to do that to one of your kids, right? Even older kids, you know, you wouldn't want that. And uh, here's that mother me coming in, you know. <laughs> anyway, so, but you know, that beauty I'm talking about, let it be the beauty in here. Um, spiritually, you know, being with the Lord, you know, um, but also too, that whole food thing and drink thing, you put it in, you put good stuff in, I think you're going to look good, you know, and, and I'm, I'm more for healthy, you know, just so you don't have skin problems or your hair problems and, and, and stuff like that. It's going to affect not just the beauty of you, but how you feel for energy and strength, you know? Again, I do that whole food thing. If, if it does not, now again, I'm not perfect, but I'm, I'm, I'm really working, you know, I'm really working hard at it. That if it doesn't give me, if what I'm going to eat in my hand doesn't give me strength and energy or drink, I ain't eating it. I'm not drinking it. And so, um, yeah. And you know, the whole food thing is going is getting different now. I'm I'm really getting a little bit concerned about that. You know, it's like what they're again. There's there's food jargon, and I don't want to really get into it because <laughs> I'm just not exactly sure how you get eggs from plants or meat from plants or um, milk from plants. I'm, I'm not sure how that works. You know, I think we need to, I don't know. And they have a name for it too. You know, I just think it, it you know, people don't, don't just listen to everything you hear. Do research for yourself. And that's about food and that's about drinks. Just because a fad comes out, you know, and they've got everybody on this kind of a diet. And then, then, then a couple years they say don't do this. And then another couple years they don't do that. And then you come to find out that, hmm, uh, just, you know, do research for yourself. Do not um, listen to everything everybody says. Um, 
research uh, things for yourself. You have time. Everybody has time. You know, we all have time. What are you doing with your time? Number one, stay in the Word of God because I also believe that the Holy Spirit will alert you to things. I do. I believe that, you know, because we're not always, I mean, it, we're in a time now where they're saying right is wrong and wrong is right. And that's not just with what's going on in the laws that they're making. We'll just say that, but it's in a lot of things. It's in a lot of things, you know, and uh, you have to really be a, be a study or a researcher, you know, it's okay to have, uh, you know, hobbies and things you like to do, but be knowledgeable on the things that you're eating, you're drinking, you're watching. <laughs> you know what I mean? What am I doing with my time? Is, is, is this making me a better person? Is it making me closer to God? Am I getting smarter? Am I getting healthier? You know, like I said, other things aren't bad, but make some time to learn some things for yourself that are going to affect you. You know what I mean? So anyway, where was I? Um, because, okay, here we have in Job, chapter 8, verse 7. Your latter days will be greater than your former days. I tell people that all the time. They're like, oh, you know, I'm just going to get old. My eyes are going to go. My ears are going to go. I mean, and every, you know, everything's going to go and I'm not going to be able to walk and all this stuff. And I'm like, what? No, it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, yeah, we're getting older, but I don't know. I'm going with this scripture. It says my latter days are greater than my former. How can they be great if I'm you know, I can't see or walk or eat or anything, you know? Uh, I'm not saying people aren't going to have bouts of things or stuff. I hope not, you know, get your healing scriptures out. But, you know, this is a good time to start and help yourself, you know? Um, it says in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7 and 8, Moses, this is talking about Moses, when he, he was 120 years old when he died, and his eyes were not dim, nor his vigor abated, meaning his natural uh, vigor was not diminished, diminished, <laughs> sorry, diminished. So I'm going with that, you know, and hey, if it'll go for him, it'll go for me. Why do you think these stories are in there? You know, if, if God did it for him, he can do it for me. Remember, God's no respecter of person. I'm going for that. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, another thing about food and drink, and, and, and I don't know, I, we, I think sometimes we just take it for granted because we eat and drink so much. But even at our best efforts, you know, you got, I mean, can you really catch everything? If you don't eat organic, did I wash it really well? You know, sometimes they'll say something's organic and some people say, well, it's not really. Or you'll get something organic and then, you know, you cut it open, there's no seeds. So it's GMO'd, which is genetically modified. And you're like, wait a minute here. I'm trying, you know. So what I'm saying is do the best you can. You know, I remember one time I asked the Lord, I was studying GMOs, which is genetically modified food, reading all the labels and stuff like that. And I'm like, Lord, what do we do? You know, I feel like, you know, what do we do? We've got to eat. We've got to drink. What do we do? You know? And you know what? The Lord said to me, I remember where I was standing when he did. And he said, you know, he showed me uh, like a vision. It was like a tree of knowledge of good and evil and then a tr tree of life. Remember those were in the garden? And he says, choose life that you may live. And he said, nobody's making you buy that food. Nobody's making you eat that food. It's a choice what you put in your basket. People are actually going out 
and they're buying things that are harming them. They're paying with their own money things that are going to harm them just because of a taste. And I know you want something to taste good, you know. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes we, we need to, you know, that might be a little overrated. If you want to be healthy, it can't. There's a lot of healthy things that taste great. You know, you can change your taste buds, believe it or not. You know, you don't eat sweets or something. Oh my gosh, a piece of fruit is like candy, you know. You can change. Trust me, you can. Yeah. You know, it's funny. When you eat junk food, you want junk food. But when you start eating healthy food, you crave healthy food. You don't drink water. And I'm guilty. I need to do that more. Um, but once you start, your thirst becomes insatiable. You want more and more. You know? So, yeah. You can make a change. Your desires can change. You know? And, um, and you'll feel better for it. So, and another thing what I wanted to touch on was, um, in John chapter six, verse 11, it says, Jesus took the loaves and when he gave thanks, he distributed to them, to the people. Remember the loaves and the fishes. And then also in Luke chapter nine, verse 16, also, then he took the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed them. And he always gave thanks. So to me, what I started to say before about even with our best efforts trying to find good food, and it's out there. It's out there. You know, a lot of it we make our own choices. You know, we could let's just choose choose life. Remember that you shall live. And uh, but I believe even with our best efforts, you're not always gonna do everything right. You're not gonna always catch everything. Do your best. But you're, you just, it's, how are you going to catch every little thing on everything, you know? And uh, um, I, I believe, you know, definitely do your best. Educate yourself. Study. Read the labels. It's so easy today. You can do it on your phone. Look it up. What is da 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 Look it up. Um, and then... Uh, it, give thanks for it. Pray over your food. I, I really think that that is more powerful than we know. I think that blessing our food, again, it is. It's more powerful than we know. Give thanks for it and and bless it. You know, I think we take that maybe for granted because we have so much. It's so plentiful. And, um, you know, are we, are we truly thankful, you know? Um, but bless it. Ask God to bless it. I, I really think that that's a, a safety for us. I do. So, anyway, um, I do want to pray uh, right now. I want to pray for salvation. That's the most important thing um, of all these messages. Yeah, we can talk about beauty and food and, and all kinds of things. And, um, you know... Another little tip, I don't want to blow your mind here, but, you know, as far as your body goes and everything, do they say if you can't eat it, don't put it on your body because, you know, stuff you put on, it goes in. Whether it's on this or not everything that goes into your body has to go by your mouth. You know, you got everything, you know what I'm saying? So think about that, you know. I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of, I love researching things. It's so much fun for me, you know. Um, I love to learn things. And I love to learn about that kind of stuff, too. It's fun. And uh, so, but let's pray. I want to pray for salvation first. The most important thing is, the stuff is all good. It is. Um, but the most important thing is to be born again. Is when we're done here where everybody's going to die to know that you're going to go to heaven and live with jesus for the rest of our i mean, I mean forever the rest of our lives forever and ever and ever and ever and uh if you don't know jesus i'm going to give you that opportunity right now just pray with me and if you want to i guess you got to want to you know that's when you really mean it with all your heart you know, you can say it, but do you really mean it?
So I've actually known people that said it and they didn't mean it. They weren't really born again. So let's it, just pray it with me if you want to, if you really want to. So Father God, I just thank you for your word. Your word says in John chapter 3, verse 3, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of heaven. And so I just ask you right now, Jesus Christ, come into my heart. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for me and rose again from the dead for me. I ask you forgive me for all my sins. I want to live for you. Help me to live for you. Change my life. Change me. I ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ta-da! Oh my, I gotta, I don't know how long that thing was on, but um, my phone's going down. And so the last thing I want to do is just pray. If you're struggling in your health in any way, um, you just want God to help you with that. If there's um, any kind of, you know, food problems there, addictions, um, you know, you're getting older and you're not feeling strong. You don't have the energy. Um, yeah, we're all going to die someday, but I don't think we have to be, you know, where we can't do anything anymore. You, I read to you what it says here. What happened to Moses? It can happen to us, right? Okay, so let's pray, you know, just for God to help you in that area. Whatever area you might be struggling in, I want to join my faith with yours. The Bible says if two of us agree is touching anything, it shall be done. And so I'm joining my faith with yours, and I'm going to pray for you. And so, just Father God, I believe that what your word says, like even with Moses, you know, his eyes weren't dim. His natural forces were not abated. And I'm asking you, help me, Lord. What can I do? Help me. What can I do to get stronger? Help me to change my eating habits and what I'm drinking as well. Help me to also really put into my heart your word, Lord God, so that I could be beautiful on the inside. That's even more important help me help me with that Lord help me I I am not able to give up certain things it, it just I don't I can't for some reason and so anybody that's having that a problem right now any food addictions any struggles even in that area I want to pray and ask God to deliver you from any food addictions um, that you know aren't good and you just for some reason food or drink you know that you can't seem to give up. And I pray God gives you strength right now in the name of Jesus and delivers you from that addiction. Um, God is a deliverer. I'm not the deliverer and I'm not the healer. I just pray the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And I just ask you, Lord, help them in whatever area they're struggling in to get their health back on track and to recover and to get stronger. Even as we get older, our latter days are greater than our former days. Keep saying that. You know, I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. My eyesight's getting better. I'm not getting feeble and weak. You know, the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Say I'm strong. You got to say it. You know, if God says, let the weak say, I am strong, even if you're weak in um, um, uh, the area with food and drinks and, you know, even I, I can't seem to read the Bible or I'm not able to fast, not that you're not able, but I, I can't seem to get it started or going, you know, if you're struggling or feel weak in an area, God says, say you're strong. I pray, Lord, you give them strength in areas that they're weak. Father, I ask you to give them strength. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you that you're going to get stronger in whatever area you're weak. But make sure you say that. God says, let the weak say. So you need to say it too. I said it, now you say it. And keep saying it. 
And I thank you for that, Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I want to um, just say, may the name of the Lord Jesus Christ always be glorified in you. I'm going to end this now. I do want to say that if you have any questions, I love Q&A. Any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. And um, if you have prayer requests, I would love to pray for you. I will. Just put that down there as well. Also in the description, I have uh, set up a PayPal and Zelle. If you would like to give, um, I would say thank you for supporting me. I appreciate it. And until next time, God bless you.